Hello and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to rank the Val Luton horror films made in the early 1940s. Now, usually in these rankings I do a sort of introduction to how I feel about these films, but I've actually been doing a retrospective of these movies on my channel over the last few months with long form reviews of each movie. So I won't do that this time. I'll just leave a link at the bottom. And if you want to follow my retrospective and you know wider thoughts on these movies, you can follow the retrospective from the beginning. So I'll jump straight into the ranking this time. And we kick off at number nine with poor old Bedlam. I wanted to like it this time more than I've done before, but I have to admit it's by far and away the weakest of the group. Probably the only one that I'm not that keen on. The others I think are all great. It was very difficult to put them in order. But yes, Bedlam is probably the least. It takes a long time to get going. It's half an hour of sort of Hogarthian comedy of manners and witty put-downs, which I find a bit boring. And then when she gets put in the asylum and you want bad things to happen, they don't really happen. And there's no real threat. Um, there's, there's some felicities in the, in the dialogue. There's some good ideas in there. And it's still worth watching. But it doesn't really do it for me. So that's why it's number nine. By quite a way, actually. In eighth place is another of the Boris Karloff films, Isle of the Dead. Now, this time round, I was struck by how good this film is. How strange it is. What a strange storyline. What a strange setting. I can't get my head around this film. How did it get made? How did it get pitched in the pitching meeting? But it has some great moments in it. There are some moments which are really unsettling, like the bit at the beginning when he looks back to the coastline and the light has gone out, which is never fully explained. How they're walking around this cemetery, this, this realm of the dead, and suddenly they come across this house full of people. It's like they've moved into another plane of existence. And the end scenes where the woman comes back from the dead she scrabbles away out of the coffin, screaming. Absolutely terrifying. With brilliant use of shadow, you know. The, the, the uh, photography is excellent. So I was very impressed by this film, and it's gone up in my estimation. In seventh place, Curse of the Cat People. <clears throat> this film has very different reactions. It's a bit of a Marmite movie. Uh, some people can never forgive it, because it's really a children's film, dressed up as a horror film. And when I was a teenager, I didn't like it for that reason. But I've come round to this movie. I think it's a really beautiful little piece of work. I'm not sure who it's for, because I don't think it'll be that appealing to many children. But as an older guy, I find it very moving and beautiful. It was Robert Wise's first uh, directing task. He took it over from Gunter Frisch. And I think he does a very good job. And there's some beautiful performances. And I really enjoy it. I think it's a beautiful, if you've never tried it, give it a whirl. It's only just over an hour long. And it's a, it's a very beautiful ch film about children rather than a children's movie. In sixth place is the movie that when I first started this retrospective, I thought I'd be placing bottom because previously I'd always found it the least interesting of the movies, mostly because of its subject matter, which is nothing to do with the supernatural, really. And I thought it was, you know, metaphysically, if you like, the least interesting story. But I watched it again this time round, and I bloody loved it. It's a great movie. The Body Snatcher, this is the, the first of the Boris Karloff movies. It's so well directed by Robert Wise in his first solo directing feature. And the, the, the production design, the cinematography, the way it recreates old Edinburgh, the acting is superb. I also, I love the way Boris Karloff says, Toddy, Toddy. Um, I love this movie. Um, it's gone up massively in my estimation um, and really highly recommended. Fifth place, The Leopard Man. Now, this is the tricky film of the Val Luton cycle. I have such mixed feelings about this movie. On the one hand, in terms of the story, I find the story quite uninteresting, right? This panther's got loose. You know, and there's the serial killer aspect of it, which I don't find interesting in the slightest, right? But somehow, Tourneur's direction, oh my God, it's so good. You're watching a master craftsman at work, and he's turning this rather middling material into gold, and it's beautiful to watch. And the way that he builds up the atmosphere in this border town, and this sense of, this terrifying sense of fate overhanging all these characters and their little lives... Is, is, is beautiful and memorable. And, and, I, and I like it for that reason alone. I'm struck by how intelligent 
Tourneur's direction is, how this theme of fate, you know, the little ball in the fountain being held up by forces it doesn't understand, and how we are prey to forces we don't understand, and how Tourneur builds that into his direction all the way through the film, so that someone is walking down a darkened street and suddenly a hand emerges from the shadows saying, pick a card. You know, maybe in the script it wasn't written that way, right? But Tourneur pushes us to the edge in this story. I find that process so interesting to watch throughout the film that it's become a favourite of mine. So, not as good as the, the, the main two Tourneur films, but definitely worth your time. In fourth place, now look, I know people watching this video are going to say I'm hugely overrating this movie, and I probably am, and I apologise, but I can't put this any lower. It's The Ghost Ship. I talked about in another video about how there are some movies in life, right, they're never going to win the polls for best movie. They're not masterpieces of cinema. But there's something about them that hits you personally. And you go back to them like old friends, and you just enjoy watching them and enjoy the little moments you're expecting. You like the characters. You like sort of living in the movie, right? The Ghost Ship is one of those movies for me. When I did this retrospective, the first movie I put on my Blu-ray player was The Ghost Ship. I just wanted to watch it. And it's not the best of these films. And it might not be as good a film as The Leopard Man or The Body Snatcher, but I love it. Maybe it's because I love stories of men at sea, and this is a particularly good one, actually. But I just love the atmosphere on board the ship. I love the relationships between the various characters in this film. I think it's an intelligent, subtle adult film that uses its actors well. And this, the sequ I love the sequence with the big crane, the horrible, that horrible sequence with the chain crushing the man in that, in that uh, chamber. I love this film. I live in it. So excuse me putting it so high. In third place, the seventh victim. I know that there are many people who will raise their eyebrows at me putting this film so high. You know, I'm watching it this time round. I was alive to all the flaws of this film, all the peculiar oddities of this film. It doesn't completely work. Some of it's, bits of it I don't like, some bits of it are quite boring. But I cannot get it out of my head. I find this film absolutely fascinating. And very few films in, in any you know, genre or any part of the, the horror genre unsettle me so much. Like the scene in the subway where those drunken men come in and she recognises that one of them is the corpse she's just left behind in the office. The ending where a woman comes back and meets this random woman on the stairs and they have this interchange about life. One of them goes to commit suicide, the other one runs out into the night. These are scenes that stay with you. I am perfectly willing to admit that this is not a good, as good a film as some of the films I've already discussed in this video, but I don't think that those other films get under your skin quite as much as this movie. But obviously, right, I was going to put the two Tourneur classics top. Of course I was. And the order is totally arbitrary. I love these two films equally. They are masterpieces of low-budget cinema. I'm going to put second, I Walked With a Zombie. I Walked With a Zombie is... You know what fascinates me about this movie? If you look at it, just objectively, it's quite simple, right? And the way it's put together, it's a very cheap film, it's very basic, there's no sort of grandiloquent gestures with the camera or editing or effects or anything. Yet somehow, through Tourneur's approach, his sensibility, and through Luton's sensibility, it contrives to be one of the most silkiest, most unsettling, most ambiguous, one of the darkest films ever to come out of Hollywood. The sequences, the horror sequences, are very simple and nothing really horrible happens, but you remember them. The first shot of the wife walking somnambulist through that fort at night, coming towards the girl. Then going from the home fort to the voodoo camp and then meeting Carrefour on the crossroads and the badge comes off her clothes and she walks forward and then Carrefour turns and walks into the night. Simple scenes, nothing pretty horrible is happening. But the richness, you, might, you feel the chill go down your spine. It's, it's a film that has a, an aura, a power that's much more stronger. It wells up and builds, completely against its meagre resources. And that fascinates me, and I think it's very beautiful. 
But first, top of the totem pole, I had to pick cat people. I had to. I just had to pick cat people. It's a film I first saw when I was a teenager. I've watched it periodically many, many times. It never loses its freshness. It never loses its charm. And it's a very important film for me. I once did a video about the 11th best films ever made, by which I meant movies that will never get on top of that sight and sound 10 best film poll ever. You know, your regular de jour, Citizen Kane's, Vertigo's, 2001 A Space Odyssey. They'll never get there. But everyone who knows them loves them. They're everyone's 11th favourite film. Well, Cat People is my 11th favourite film ever. I think it's wonderful. And the other reason I have to pick Cat People is because it's so important in the horror genre itself, right? This, I think, is the Citizen Kane of horror films. It's the first modern horror film. It brings the horror film kicking and screaming out of the world of Victorian Gothic into the modern era. And I admire that so much, and it does it so with such ease. Beautiful sequences like a bus suddenly rushing into the scene, or that wonderful swimming pool sequence. You know, it finds modern horror so easily and so gracefully, and I deeply admire it for that. Look, I love these movies. I could have put them in any order. So if your favourites are at the bottom, don't worry. I, you know, if you Curse of the Cat People or Body Snatcher is amongst your first or second films, I'm happy with that. These are great movies. I could watch them again and again. I'd love to know your rankings and your thoughts about these th films below. Thanks very much.